coming up on Digging Into the Future. You know, the need for more bandwidth is definitely pushing us to try to expand our capability. Right now, for most cables, extra fiber repairs is the economic way to go, but um, you know, there are some other techniques we have out there. Dave was, uh, in, in around 2000, was the guy that took Subcom uh, both public and then, and then uh, so to speak, private, but through probably some of the more tumultuous years of, of the, uh, the industry um, and, and was probably one of the key guys in terms of putting a lot of the fiber infrastructure in the water around the world over those last two decades. So a great, great uh, uh, resource for us uh, to talk to you today about where, where he sees fiber going in the future. Uh, and, and really looking back on, on how things went over the last couple of years. So, uh, Dave, welcome to uh, Digging Into the Future. Hey, thanks, Bill. It's uh, good to be with you. It's also good to see you. I mean, obviously, you and I have had a business slash friendship relationship for many of those years in those past two decades, so it's nice to be here with you. Do you think it's the era of the telco actually building cables is over? Um, or do you, you know, is it... Uh, you know, is it going to be five guys or, or ten guys that, uh, that are all tech OTT guys building the cables? Or do you think uh, there'll still be telcos building cables in the future? We, um, you know, I, I think over the last ten years you saw the, the telco builds were, were less speculative and more driven by unique routes where the telco still played a major role and or filling in a network need. So, you know, there are a number of customers that, we see right now, you know, if we look at our at our business uh, um, on the infrastructure build side, yes, the ICPs are a major portion of it, forty or so percent of our revenue. But um, you know, you have you have CMUE six, that's a telco driven project. Um, obviously, the consortium model is one that's proven successful over years, but it, you know, it takes a lot of experienced operators a long time to get that model all lined up. And that's why, you know, I think in the past you would see some of the volatility that's getting smooth now where, say, you know, a ICP could decide, hey, next week I want to build. Um, so I do think there is a place for the telcos. Uh, we're certainly seeing it in our revenue. And, and um, you know, there's some very successful ones out there. You and I have some friends at some companies we could name that uh, they've been playing this game for a long time and doing it well. Yep. No, no, I think it's, I think it's true. But it's, it is the challenge, I think, with uh... – um, and what, what, you, what, so just, uh, you know, I've been, uh, I've been out of the industry now, I think for about 16, 18 months when I, when I left, I think you guys were jamming about 20 terabits down a single fiber pair and I'm looking at a fiber behind you right there. I mean, how much goes down one of those little wires now? How much can you, how much can you push? Uh, it, so 20 terabits is, is, uh, you know, something we're consistently doing. You're certainly seeing, uh, you know, if you want to open up the L band, right, you know, typically we only play in the C band. Uh, we did build a system for someone where we opened up the L band and now we're getting 40 terabits uh, down a single fiber. Typically now we're building about 16 fiber pair. So you can quickly do the math. Typically not C plus L, just, just C. But, uh, you know, you're talking a very big cable. You know, the, the demand for these cables, for the for the underlying ability of these cables is growing so fast, um, you know, kind of 45 to 50 percent CAGR on bandwidth usage, depending on who you ask. But either way, you know, you're talking about doubling every two and a half or two years, depending on which number you look at. So, um, you know, the need for more bandwidth is definitely pushing us to try to expand our capability. Right now, for most cables, extra fiber pairs is the economic way to go, but um, you know, there are some other techniques we have out there. And I, I think part of it will be um, uh, building edge infrastructure, um, the ability to, to interconnect, a lot more capillarity in these cables. I think um, the, other, the other thing I think that's interesting, um, and it would be interesting to get your viewpoint, but it seems like there's some new spots on the map that are getting interesting. Like we're, we're seeing Guam, you know, people are talking about, uh, you know, places in the Mediterranean uh, like Cyprus, where all of a sudden, if there are issues, these, these are now becoming the new kind of landing points. Uh, I mean, what's your, your thoughts on that? Are you, are you seeing that as well as you sort of manufacture these things? Yeah, you know, you know it's interesting. And, in, in, you know, this goes back to the uh, what is old is new again in some cases. You know, for, for a long time, 
everything stopped in Guam or Hawaii, and then everything was about going direct. And now we're seeing more and more people talking about, uh, and we've seen a number of cables being built that you know go to Guam, and and we're having people propose to us to go to Hawaii. I think some of it's around the regulatory concerns that you talked about because if you start breaking your network into logical pieces, you have more flexibility if something gets uh, you know regulated in a different way than if you know you're doing eleven thousand kilometer you know, straight shot from California to, uh, to Australia, you know, you have limited flexibility. So, uh, you know, it, it, absolutely true. We are seeing more and more people talk about, uh, about different, uh, configurations and, and Guam's coming up quite a bit in particular. Well, it's interesting to see how the, um, um, how these countries will, will pan out. Cause also I think in the middle East, you've got sim- similar challenges, right? I think everyone's trying to to master uh, how, to, how to get through Egypt and some of these places, right? Which is, uh, and I'm sure, what's, I mean, have you seen, there was a lot of thoughts about terrestrial cables, but I, they, it seems like everything still routes through Egypt. And, and uh... Yeah, there, there were a number of cables that were contemplated that were going to bypass Egypt. Uh, but, you know, the, the, the two systems that we're going to be building in the region, uh, both are going through Egypt, um, there's, there's a system that's certainly being promoted that we're part of and, uh, and you know, it, it, it's in the early phases that's contemplating bypassing Egypt, but the two that are in, in, in immediate construction right now and un- underway, um, as opposed to in the design phase, um, are going through Egypt. I think people look at it and say, wow, I have a lot of content going through a very small area and how do I diversify around it? And we're certainly prepared to, uh, you know, help develop cables that, uh, need to go where our customers want them to go. But right now, um, there's only one cable that we're associated with that's really, really looking at it seriously. Now you're looking out into the future, next two, three years, you think, uh, what, what do you think uh, for all the folks at PTC coming back to Hawaii, do you think it's, uh, it's going to be all smiles or do you think it's going to be uh, challenging after COVID goes away? I mean, do you think uh, that shrinks demand or, or do you think it, it continues forward? Um, for, from the discussion with our customers, I, I would say, um, I would say that demand is going to continue, you know, in this talking about, you know, the underlying bandwidth usage in this, you know, call it 40 to 50% at those rates, it almost doesn't matter. Right. It, it's so huge. Um, so I see, I see the, the long term is, is, you know, certainly the next three to five years as, as significant increases and, you know, some of our biggest worries are how do we as a company get in position to be able to meet the demand that we're going to have? Um, what is the health of our supply chain, specifically around some of the marine and the marine services places? And that's where I'm spending a lot of my time and we're spending a lot of our focus. So uh, we think uh, that, you know, there's the days of the, of the whipsaw demand are, are, are behind us, sure. There'll be some volatility because there's there are big projects. Not volatility, I'd say some fluctuation would be a safer word to say. But the overall trend is up. Um, you know, I see other people predicting you know kind of a doubling of the market uh, over the next five or so years uh, in terms of the uh, number of kilometers being built, and I could see that happening. All right. Well, this is Dave Coughlin from Subcom here on Digging Into the Future. Thanks, Dave, for spending some time with us today. Of course, Bill. Glad to do so.